video I want to look at the constraints uh, Leica built into the Leica Q2 and also the Leica Q when it comes to shutter speed and ISO combinations. And um, these constraints are not dependent on the aperture. So the aperture is independent and is not constrained. So I can go wide open if I want, but I cannot choose long exposures with high ISO values. And I'm going to demonstrate this now. So I have on my customizable button here ISO settings. So let's uh, take this down to uh, 100. And then on the um, shutter speed dial, I can actually go to one plus and one plus, if you see it here, gives me the option to uh, choose longer shutter speeds. And that's what I'm going to do now. So if um, I turn my wheel here, and let's zoom this a little bit so we see what's going on here. I'm going up from one second to 1.3 seconds uh, to 1.6, two seconds and so on. I can increase my uh, shutter speed and uh, make it longer and longer and longer. Sorry, I should have said I shorten my shutter speed. That's always uh, the matter with the directions here. So I increase uh, the time the shutter is open to 90 seconds and 120 seconds. And now at 120 seconds, the next notch I get is a T. And uh, when I got my Leica Q quite some years ago, my naive assumption was that T is a bulb mode. So a bulb mode basically means if I um, push down the shutter and keep it, or if I push it down, release it and push it again, depending on the mechanism I have on my camera, it's taking exposure basically forever. As long as I tell the camera, it should stop taking exposure. That's what a bulb mode is. But the Leica Q2 and the Leica Q don't have a bulb mode. And you can also not trick it by going into the remote control via the iOS app. And by the way, for the Leica Q2, the new photo app from Leica is not updated yet. It will come in the next days, hopefully. So there's no way to trick this. And um, that's why I wanted to demonstrate now what the constraints are and then discussing briefly uh, what this means in terms of night sky photography. I'm someone who likes to go out at night. I like dark scenes uh, with taking long exposures. I like the Milky Way. I like the stars. Um, I like all of that. And I wanted to find out over the weekend by doing a few test shots if the constraints like I have built in here are limiting me in the way I can use this camera and whether I have to carry a second camera from another brand like Sony or Nikon or Canon or Fuji or what have you uh, to get the shots done I want to take. So let's look at the constraints now. The first thing is um, if, um, if I'm going in the ISO value now, or maybe let's do this differently. Let's uh, get this back to 120 seconds. So here we go. Let's zoom this in. Now, if I choose a different ISO value, I was at ISO 100 and turn ISO up to 200. It's already limiting me down to 60 seconds. And the next stop after 60 seconds is the T mode. So there's no way to keep the 120 seconds here in the last stop before T. If I go further up in my ISO value to 400, it's limiting me down to 30 seconds. If I go further up to 800, it's limiting me down to 15 seconds and 15 seconds is already quite tight. If I take pictures of the Milky Way or the night sky, it's a 20 seconds, 25 seconds exposure. If you go up to 30 seconds on a full frame sensor, it will start to build small tiny lines because of earth rotation. So 20, 25 seconds on a full frame sensor, I think is the limit. But 15 seconds is quite tight for my taste. If I go further up to 1600, it's limiting me down to eight seconds now. And if I go further up to uh, 3200, which is a very reasonable ISO value for the night sky, it's limiting me to four seconds. And that stays actually also for the uh, next ISO value for 6400. So I'm at four seconds. 
So how is this limiting me? And uh, I'm going to show some examples uh, later on. As I said, it's independent of the aperture. At least you can keep the aperture wide open. But that might limit if you have some foreground, your depth of field, uh, because not everything will be sharp. And if you focus at infinity, the stars will do fine in the Milky Way. If you see, then want to catch it. But things in the foreground will not be sharp. And that's a real limitation, I think, uh, which is uh, probably creating a lot of headache to people using the Q2. Let's spend a moment and uh, try to contemplate why Leica built in these constraints in beautiful cameras like the Leica Q2 and the Leica Q. And the most likely uh, reasoning for me is overheating of the sensor. And uh, some people think that ISO really is a sensitivity of the sensor like it used to be in old film, film rolls. I think those people are mistaken because uh, every sensor has a native sensitivity and all that's happening if you boost up ISO values, it's basically uh, an, an emphasizing or strengthening the signal in a way that again, heat is uh, generated on the sensor. And of course, if you take long exposures, again, heat is generated on the sensor and in combination that might harm the hardware. And I think that's the most likely, um, the most likely reason why Leica built this in. The question nevertheless remains why other manufacturers can do this. So for instance, the very compact Sony RX, uh, RX1R or RX1R Mark II is equally compact, is very small and does not have these kind of constraints. But I think it's tedious to uh, spend a lot of thought on this. Fact is that we have these constraints, so we have to deal with it and we need to try out what it means uh, if people want to do night sky photography with the Leica Q2. Now let's look at the T-mode and uh, I said before, some years ago on the Leica Q, I assumed this is a bulb mode, but it turned out to be that it is not a bulb mode. So let's see what it does. And for this, we turn the um, shutter speed dial to one plus. Uh, we make sure we are on ISO 100 and then we um, increase exposure time. So you see it here, basically we increase it up to T. 120 seconds, that's the longest exposure time we have, and then we increase it by one notch to T, and then we release the shutter. Of course, this will be uh, completely overexposed now uh, because uh, I have the aperture wide open, but that's not what I wanted to show. It's just about showing the mechanism on combinations of ISO and uh, shutter speed, so forget what you see on the live view here on the camera. So let's take the shot. And you see now it's counting, so it tells me how many seconds exposure is taken. If you want to check on this, you can half press down the shutter release. It gives you where we currently stand. So we have 12 seconds and I think we let the camera work for a moment. So we are now at 1 minute 59 seconds, 2 minutes. Let's wait for a moment. And then we will see if we push the release again. It's going up to 2 minutes and then it starts noise reduction in progress. So let's look at this again, noise reduction in progress, and then it starts to count backwards. So it's not a bulb mode, it stops a few seconds uh, past two minutes, and then it starts with noise reduction, which basically means the camera with the same exposure time is creating a dark frame for noise reduction. So I'm curious now, how is this playing out at higher ISO values? So what we learned now is that an ISO of 100, the T mode does not provide a longer exposure time than what I already have. If I turn up my uh, control wheel here to 120 seconds, it's basically the same. Now, what would be nice if independent of the ISO value chosen, I could at least use the T mode uh, to get two minutes of exposure. So let's uh, turn up ISO. Let's go directly to 1600. And uh, let's switch the camera. Now it's constrained to eight seconds. You see this here, what you saw before. Let's give it one more notch on the control wheel. So we get to T mode. And now let's see if we now take the exposure, will it again count up to two minutes plus, or will it again also here have, like you have it on the last stop before T and eight second constraint. It's counting. We see it, we can check. In the meanwhile, five seconds, six seconds, seven, eight, and now is noise reduction. Again, I do not get away that constraint. So the T mode gives me exactly the maximum, the maximum exposure time, which is attached to that ISO value. So there's no way to overcome this. 
And that's basically uh, what we have to live with if we want to take only a Leica Q2 with us into the night and we don't want to carry a second device like some other cameras who don't have these kind of constraints. So again, even in the T mode, uh, the um, ISO value is controlling and limiting uh, the shutter speed uh, we can uh, select here. And I personally ask myself what the T mode then is good for anyway. So in front of me, I now have the Leica M10P and want to see if we have the same constraints here. And uh, if you look at that value here, it's at ISO 100 now, and I boost this now up to an ISO value of, let's say, let's say 3200, which is something we considered on the Leica Q2. And then on the control wheel, let's get this close so that people can see this. You have something like automatic, you have all the shutter speeds, but you also have a B and the B should be the bulb mode. So it should actually take exposures until I tell the camera it's time to stop taking exposures. But you see here, it is constrained to 16 seconds. Nothing I can do about that. And if we go one notch higher on the ISO value to 6400, it's limiting me to eight seconds. So again, also on the Leica M10P, I'm constrained. And by the way, there is nothing you can do about these constraints, even if we would work with an old school cable release like this one, because the Leica M10P has, lucky enough, uh, something where you can attach an old school cable release. But even if we would do that and would use basically the mechanism of that, so if you look at this here, it's working like this, and you screw it into your shutter release, even if you would use that, the constraint remains that if we look at the camera, and we go up to ISO 6400, we are limited to an eight second exposure time. Same problem as on the Q2 and the Q, and probably again, overheating of the sensor might be the deeper reasoning why Leica has uh, engineered it in that way. Black night. That basically was the situation uh, when uh, I came to that cemetery here. So the background story is simple. Uh, my wife and I were visiting my father over the weekend and he lives in a small village uh, close to Stuttgart in Germany. And uh, when we said goodbye in the evening, uh, I realized that just close to my parking lot there was a cemetery. And it was also a beautiful night, uh, but you do not see the Milky Way in Stuttgart, of course because of the light pollution like it typically comes from big cities. But that cemetery just caught my attention and uh, I grabbed my tripod, my Leica Q2, uh, went to the spot and it was quite hard to mount the camera on the tripod because it was pitch black dark. So uh, I took some exposures, some test shots. I wanted to see what the Leica Q2 is capable of and here's one of the results. And uh, I'm going to show this now. So first of all, I used my smartphone LED to light up the foreground and since uh, it was then overexposed in Lightroom later on I took down the highlights, I boosted up the shadows a little bit. I wanted to have a bit of clarity and sharpening and most importantly for the sky I used some noise reduction and color noise reduction. And uh, what I want to show here and demonstrate basically is if you look at the night sky it's pretty nice. Uh, stars are pinpoint sharp. There is almost no noise recognizable here, so uh, I've seen much worse with other cameras and uh, I think this looks pretty clean. And in terms of metadata, if we look at the axis here, so let's go to the little eye here in Lightroom. I used an ISO of 1600, an aperture of f2.8 and 8 seconds of exposure time, which is, as we saw before, the maximum exposure time you can take attached to a value of ISO 1600. And I think that is my recommendation for people who want to uh, take shots of the night sky with the Leica Q2 with ISO 1600 f2.8 reasonably open but already closed a little bit to get a, a larger depth of field and then with an 8 second exposure that will do the trick. And you see here if uh, I would have been in a location where we have less light pollution 
if I would have been in a location where I could see the Milky Way. Of course, if I see those stars popping out of the night sky here, I could easily with the same uh, settings also photograph the Milky Way. I want to conclude uh, that video with two sample pictures taken with other cameras, but I want to keep them in front of my eyes. And if I uh, get with my Leica Q2 to a similar spot, I will take those pictures and I will for sure post them here on YouTube.